So Jules, what did you learn about relationships whilst you were inside? Um, the relationship with myself was very important and it grew very strong. And that I am so grateful for all the people on the out that I maintained my relationship with and who supported me. That's lovely. They're amazing. Yeah. What about you? Um, I learned that uh, romantic relationships um, can be challenging, um, but it's a great way to support. There's great ways to support each other. Um, but with when it comes to families and, and friends, you can strengthen those relationships. You can deepen those connections uh, and yeah, build them and make them better and stronger. Hello and welcome back to Life After Prison with Zach and Jules. And uh, in these episodes, we like to talk all things prison, life after prison, the criminal justice system and anything uh, topical around these subjects. Yeah. And today we wanted to start with you guys. So we asked you a question. We said, ask us anything. Anything. Which we haven't done before. And we got some great responses. Some good, juicy questions yeah so we're gonna read out a few of them so first up this one's from sam and sam you said i am facing a 21 month sentence it's your first sentence and any tips first thing to do is breathe good tip yeah breathe um for the immediate future it will get worse it'll go, it's gonna seem like it's getting worse before it gets better that's the first thing secondly um, what did he say? He's facing a 21 month sentence. So, that, so he I'm hasn't got it. Um, he ain't got it yet. Well, yeah, but I'm also guessing that's 21 months in total inside. That's what I'm... Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, inside, maybe. Yeah. Uh, uh, so... Facing can, facing can even mean I'm doing yeah. or could be doing. Either way, it's yeah. a significant sentence regardless, yeah? Um, because that's some time away. So the first thing I say to you is, um, yeah, breathe. It's, it's going to get worse before it gets better but it does get much, much better. What, what you're going to experience now, I know you're probably stressing, anxiety, you know, probably can't sleep or eat, right? That's normal. That's the first thing. It's normal. You're anxious. It's a big change happening in your life, right? Um, the second thing, the next thing you should do is mentally prepare. You know, life's going to be different. You're going to be in a, in new surroundings if you do end up getting that sentence. Um, but build a support system before you go in. You've got this time right now utilize it um find out find out who can support you how they can support you um get the addresses and and, and telephone numbers of your people so you can keep in touch uh what else would you say Jules yeah I mean they're obviously great I would say um plan kind of what you want to achieve inside so that you can like you said, prepare, but prepare like how, what you're going to do with your time. I think that's, I think that's good. So you don't just think you need to get through these 21 months. How are you going to, you know, better yourself in these 21 months? And what can you learn in 21 months? Yeah. What can you, what can, yeah, what, what can you do in 21 months? It's more like no one wants to go to prison, but like a challenge. How are you going to use this time the best you can? And I would say so that when you come out, you know, you're in a better place, then you don't have to be in a worse place when you come out of prison. 100%. Mentally, you can be so much better. You yep. can be so much stronger. Physically too. But obviously, like you said, it's going to be such a big change and there are going to be struggles, um, but it's going to make you more resilient. It's going to make you so much more tougher. So there is so much you can achieve in these 21 months. Also, I'd say a positive is you know how long you're going to get. And yes, it's a significant amount of time, but it's also not not your whole life. Like it's quite short in your whole life, let's yeah. say. Um, so you got this, like you hundred percent have got this. Yeah. I would also, um, if you know you're going inside, I would also prep to pack some bits and bobs, yes. sliders, <laughs> flip flops, sliders, a you couple need them. Boxes items and of socks, clothes, yeah. underwear in general for anyone else, underwear in general. Um, um, you, yeah, that's, I think that's the main things. What else would you say? You can take like your toothbrushes and stuff in or like... You can buy that, you have to buy that in canteen. Yeah. I mean, majority of the stuff you will be able to get in canteen, but take some bits with you so that you're not completely yeah. using prison issue everything. Yeah. Because that can feel like a whole That's, outside world kind of thing as well. Yeah. You know, you 
I I took a hoodie, a, a jumper in, maybe no hoodies because you don't know what prison you're going to be in. But I took a jumper in that really saved me because I used to put it over my pillow every single night. Yeah. Also, it was just a bit of me. It wasn't just prison covers, prison, everything. That was a bit of comfort for you, mm. wasn't it, Charles? Uh, but I like what you said. I'm, I'm going to go to a point where you said that you don't have to come out in a, in a worse off position. You can come out in a better position, ready to springboard. Um, sometimes I sit back and reflect on my time in prison and I think I could, as much as I did whilst I was in there, I could have utilised my time more. Mm -hmm. I could have done things differently and done a bit more. So believe me, sometimes prison, the good thing about it is you have time in there that you never get on the outside. Yeah. So utilise it as best as you can. Pick up a new hobby, um, perfect a skill, work on a language, learn something. You know what I mean? You've and got if loads you go of different in options. With the, these preparations, you're more likely to use the time in that way. Um, and mm -hmm. and yeah, I'm going to say it again. You got this. If we can do it, you can do it. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, you got this. Good luck. Thanks for that question, though, mm. Sam. And um, we hope it works out for you. Yeah. What's, what's next then, Jules? Um, oh, it's me. All right, cool. So next, I've got a question that came in uh, from... Laura, she sent in two questions, actually. So the first one is, are there hierarchies in prisons? Hmm. Double-headed question. Uh, and the second question is, um, and is it easy to stay out of drama? So let's go. Okay. Um, both those questions, are there hierarchies? Kind of. Yeah. Unofficially. <laughs> yeah. Officially. There is a, there is, you got governor, number one, <laughs> all of that, prison staff, CO, all of that stuff. That's their hierarchy. If you, I think she talks about. She, I think she's talking prisoners. about the prisoners. I know. Unofficially, no. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Officially, no. Unofficially, yes. Is that confusing? Yeah, no, it, so, it, I think there is, but there, obviously it depends on what you care about, who, what you go inside to do, yeah. like, and if you need to know, because sometimes you're not, you don't, you're not even like, you don't even need to know or be a part of it. You can, you should just be aware that these things, these hierarchies do sometimes exist. Um, the best way to do your time is stay clear of them. Um, don't get involved in it. You know what I'm saying? It can suck you in kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's not really like black and white like that. Yeah. It's like there is, oh yeah, there's a hierarchy as soon as you get in yeah. there. Blah, blah, blah. It's so, a moving picture. People yeah. move, situations change. <laughs> situations change all the time. We're humans. People are humans. So it's, it's yeah, it's uh, it's it's always changing. Yeah. Um, and to, staying second, out of drama. What, oh, is it easy question. to stay out of drama? Tricky. Yes and no as well. So... I think that yes, if you're really strong minded and you're just lucky, um, luck. sometimes you are, yeah, sometimes it is luck because even if you don't want no drama and you're not involved, you can get, it's a very small world in prison. Yeah. It's like a week is. It's like a month. A week's like a month. Like a day is like a, a week. week. Yeah, yeah, I'll say it like that. So what am I trying to say? That like. It's hit or miss, isn't it? Sometimes, like you can avoid what it. What was the question? Avoiding yeah, drama. Yeah, things happen very, very quickly. So you know, second, no day is the same, and it's it can yeah, it's very different. Yeah, uh, for for like guys, um, yes, you can, yeah, but sometimes the trouble can come to you, and you know what smacks it? Everybody knows where you live. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, Everybody does it. Yeah, that's where his his room is. Do you get what I'm saying? So I, yeah, go um, on. It, so like, if you want to avoid the drama, you can by um, like sticking to what you want to do, if that makes sense and sticking to the people that you have. I was going to say, yeah, you can stay. If you're Don't very, borrow nothing off no one. If you, if you are unlucky and you get sucked in, you can stay out of drama as well. You've got to be strong minded. So that's why I say, that's why we always say, you know, figure out who you are and what yes, you want to do when you're inside. That's the thing. Because that's really important. Staying true to yourself and, and being Stand you. Stand by your own principles too. If mm. there's something that you're not, happy taking part in or trying like people can, it's a it's a hyper it's a hyper um reality it's a high, it's a different world in there and things you can get swayed and things and things can happen but like just stay true to yourself you know what i'm saying and, and you can avoid it yeah you yeah. can and it's not all of these questions are really good but it isn't just black and white yeah. so um yeah it's it's you've just got to be 
a more aware mm -hmm. and understanding of what's going on around you and who you are. It's just like being out here. Some people live for drama. Some people ain't about it. You know what I'm saying? You just choose which way you want to go. Inside, it's a lot more heightened and closer and that's what I was saying. Smaller and crazier. So yeah. So yeah. Pick up yourself, Laura. Thank you for that question. Okay, next question is from, I really hope I say your name right, uh, Zanea. Um, you said, how can people who have never been to prison show support and help people who have? I like that. Yeah, it's, um, it must be tricky for people that haven't been to prison to, to, to deal with people that have and, you know, family, friends, uh, partners, because you haven't been there and it's vice versa, like they know you haven't been there. So it's really tricky to support people that you, you can't relate to the journey. Yeah. Um, but you can, because you've played a massive part in that journey too. Um, you know, people inside with family and friends on the out, they depend on you guys. Like we depend on, on you guys. We, we feel you the keep support. Us going, man. Yeah. We feel the support so much every single day just by being there. So you've already done your job. You've already done the support. And I guess now it's about giving that person the space and the time to, to, to fit back into your world. Yeah. Because it, for everybody, it, it's everybody who's getting released from prison. It's gonna, that, that whole transition affects people differently and everyone reacts differently and behaves differently uh, and takes to it differently. Some need, need more time than others. Some take to it like a duck to water. But um, the best thing you can do is listen to them. Like ask the right questions in terms of, oh, how are you doing? How do you feel? How best can I support you? Because when, you, when you're answering, uh, asking those questions, you're going to get the answers that can, are productive rather than someone saying, well, you don't understand what I'm going through and you're trying to figure it out yourself figure out together. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. That person? I think that's, I think that's really great. Uh, and another thing just to add on to the, uh, to the point that I was just making is, um, you can support that person, um, in what they want to do when, now that they're out. So if they had a particular interest, maybe a business they wanted to start, or maybe some employment or education they wanted to get into, you can support them in that and encourage them in that. And, and being, um, like a sounding board, you know, um, someone to, for them to just speak to uh, and being there, just support them in finding themselves again, finding their feet again and finding what they, they want to do again. The key for me is just being there. Yeah. Just, just let them know you're there if they need you um, and really do your best to understand as much, as difficult as it can be, um, they will really love you for that. I think you touched on so, like so many great points there, though, Zach. Thanks. Like, for example, you know, helping them go towards what they want to do, helping them figure that out. I think that's a, I think that's so important, so key because that's for their life. Um, and also, and what they're going to do day to day. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, listening to them. Um, but if and 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 allowing them to, if they want to talk about it, talk about it. And if they don't, then that's okay. That's okay too. But. But like telling them it's good to talk about it, like accepting it and not having it be a a difficult topic to talk about prison, because I think that's quite there's already that stigma. So if you're in your safe space, your home around your friends and stuff and talking about prison is awkward or not. Yeah, not normalize that conversation, normalize that conversation so that the person doesn't feel like a weird you know what I mean like yeah. they're an outsider so I think yeah being able to normalize that with them is going to be really key no on the head the um and lastly oh okay this question comes in from anonymous <laughs> whoever you are um and they ask are you in a relationship I love how you do it like are that. you in it are no, you like, are you like <laughs> are you in a relationship are you in a relationship well we get that a lot don't we Everybody, we have this so much. We have it through DMs. We have it in person. Yep. I in I nearly get it every day. Is it? Yeah. And it just so happens that if you're co-hosts. If you're you, attractive co-hosts, uh, you're going to get this wow. question. Well, I'm just saying, you know Go what I'm saying? On. <laughs> you're calling yourself attractive and me attractive? Me, isn't it? You know oh, what I'm wow. <laughs> Apparently, if you're, um, you're Zach and you're an attractive co-host, then... Um, 
Yeah, and just, your co host is Jules, then you're in a relationship. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. You know what I mean? But yeah, so that means every uh, presenting Jules in a relationship, innit? 